Let us now create the simplest graph or chart for categorical variables. We will want to plot the number of EU members and EU non-members in our dataset. So we will want to create a bar chart with bars, the height of which will correspond to the number of occurrences of cases within the two categories of EU membership, 0 and 1. Creating such a graph is not exactly straightforward, as we cannot simply plot the numbers that we already have in the dataset. But we first need to calculate the numbers of occurrences of cases in the two categories, 0 and 1. In Excel, we can do this with the command count if. So let us write down the two categories of EU membership. one and zero. One for members, zero for non-members. In the adjacent cell, we will use the command count if with options in brackets. The first value we need to insert is the data range. In our case, H2 to H47, the last data point in this column. The second value to be inserted, separated by a comma or by a semicolon, depending on your Excel language version, is the value, the occurrence of which we want to count. On the first line, this is number one for EU members. We will repeat the same on the next line. We can copy the code, but we must not forget to keep the range H2 to H47 from here. We would not need to care about this if we used the dollar sign in front of the numbers of the lines on the first line when we inserted the code. If we do it, the line numbers do not change even after we have copied the code one line downwards. We obviously also need to change on this second line the inserted value from 1, which we used here, to 0, as here we want to count the number, let's go one step back, from 1 here to 0 here. Since here on the second line, we are in fact calculating the number of occurrences of zeros in this column. Having done this, we can insert a bar chart under the ribbon insert and under chart. Let us start again. Insert bar chart. Okay. To create a graph, we need to select data where we add a row. First, we don't have to care much about the series name, but we could insert something like EU membership if we wanted. But we definitely do care about the values. So we set them at the appropriate range. In our case, only the two values for the numbers of occurrences we have just created. We probably also want to change the labels on the horizontal axis to 1 and 0. Mm. 
and here we have our first beautiful bar chart where EU membership equal to 1, so EU members corresponds to 18 and EU non-members corresponds to 28. Now, in R, we also first need to get the counts of the numbers of occurrences in the categories. To get it, let us create a new object called counts. To get the number of cases in each category of a categorical variable, we can use the function called table. This function will have only one option, and that will be the name of the variable we are interested in. In our case, this is EU membership, so EU underscore member. Now, what is this weird sign, weird dollar sign doing here? Well, you may recall that in R it is possible to have uploaded and ready for work many different data frames or data set that will be located here. This is an amazing advantage when you perform some more sophisticated analysis, but it can also be an annoyance since whenever we work with R, we always need to specify what data frame or data set we are working with at each point in time. And this is done by adding in front of each of the variables the name of its data set or the data frame and connecting it with the dollar sign. So the variables we include in our analysis in R will typically take the form of the name of their data set, in this case exporters, connected through a dollar sign with the variable name. There are other ways how to tell R what data set we work with, but this is the most general and reliable one. Note that unfortunately, this data set assignment needs to be done even if there is only one data set loaded in R, S in this case. So in our case, we tell R to create a table called counts. And this table will count the number of cases in each category of EU membership. If we want to see the table, we can just type count, run the piece of code, and we will see the table here in the bottom left section correctly identifying 28 non-members, so variable EU membership equal to zero, and 18 members. To create a bar chart from this table, we can use the command bar plot, where the only option in brackets will be the name of the table we have just created, so count. The bar chart or bar plot will appear in the bottom right section of RStudio. Note that we did not need to specify any data set or data frame now with the dollar sign in front of count, because the table called count is not part of any data set. Once we have created it, it simply started to flow somewhere in R's memory as a separate object, not being attached to any particular data set. And you can check that our data set exporters doesn't have any table attached to it. So we have a nice bar plot, but perhaps we want to make it look a bit cooler. So let us use some more options to achieve that. First, let's give our bar plot a title. And this is done with the option called main for main title. We set it equal to some string of letters of, or words. In our case, the string will read the simple summary of a categorical EU membership variable using a bar chart. Second, we also want to label the horizontal axis with the two categories, 0 and 1, so that we actually know what these two categories refer to. Labeling axis is, or axis x, the horizontal axis x, is done with command xlab for x label. And we set it equal to a string again, so in this case, for instance, EU membership in inverted commas. Finally, 
we need to do the most important thing of all, and that's to change the color. So let's make the bar blue, as blue as the EU flag. To do that, add a new option, call for color, and let's set it equal to blue in inverted commas. Note that all the options are separated by commas. So if we run the segment of code, we will get a nice looking bar chart, blue one with title and with label for the horizontal axis. Now we can also plot a bar chart for two variables. So we can get the distribution of cases across two categorical variables simultaneously. We will use the new variable called development to see it, and you may remember it from the data set. The variable has four categories, while EU membership only has two categories. So specifically, we will create a new table in order to produce the bar plot called counts2. And we will insert into the brackets, into the options for this uh, new for for this new object, not exactly variable, actually an object called counts to the new table, we will insert the variable development at the front of the option, so in front of EU membership. So let us create the table. We can we can see that it's that it has been created here, but we can actually have a look at it. And we see the two EU membership categories and the four development categories and the number of occurrences of cases within each of the cells of the table. Now we can tell R to produce a bar plot based on this new table called counts2. In order to make the categories clearly distinct, we can identify four different colors in the way indicated in the code here. one for each of the categories of development. So we set the option call equal to some code segment that reads C and then in brackets four color names which I have selected separated by commas, all color names in inverted commas. Otherwise we have only changed the main title a bit. So let's run the code and it gives us a nice bar plot with the individual development categories clearly visible within the categories, the two categories of EU membership. We can actually also specify another option called beside and set it equal to true. If we run the code, we will see that what we get is a bar plot in which the development bars, the four categories of development, sit next to each other within the membership categories rather than on top of each other. So very nice.